What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five with my man Eric Sheets Haber. We are going to be talking through tonight's MLB slate. Uh, we've got a you know a big slate. It should be really interesting. Uh, last night was not great for me for baseball, as Sheets pointed out. You know, and it's something that we can go over next time we do one of our roundtable discussions. And by the way, let us know if you want to do any of them, guys. Uh, hit me up in, in Discord and in uh, DM me or whatever. Um, but I. You know, I, I think maybe I, I went a little chalky. It's hard when your favorite stack is chalky. I really liked what I did on my FanDuel lineup. I played Bueller as my pitch roll. Always feels great when your guy throws a complete game shutout and has 10 strikeouts. Um, I thought there was no way to win without without the without the Scherzers and the Burns after a while. And then, then Bueller came in and actually had outdid all of them. And then you uh, and then I, I played the Dodgers stack, but I liked what I did over there because I had a 2% owned Chris Taylor. I had a 4% owned Will Smith. Yeah, I went for the 2468 stack just trying to get a way to get different. And it's just, I just want to reemphasize the point that you can try to play, you can play stacks out of order, especially stacks like the Dodgers who don't, who have, you know, talent all the way up and down the roster. And um, that is the the way you want to try to do it. When you're playing just the one through four, one through five of these chalkier stacks, you really aren't gaining. You, you, it, it's almost impossible for you to win if you're not max entering that tournament. Uh, really, really, really nearly impossible unless you get all your other one offs or three men or your side stack right. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, so I didn't have a great night for baseball, but I did do. I went one on FanDuel, lost on DraftKings. Sort of that story. I can't seem to get them both at the same time. But Sheets, how did you do? And let's get into tonight's big slate. Yeah, I didn't do very well. The 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 the, the baseball gods can be can be somewhat could be somewhat uh, treacherous. So, so, so I, uh, you know, I talked through all this on, um, on the air last night and I was saying that, you know what, what, why, what am I screwing around for? I'm just going to just pound the Dodgers, right? For those of you that you were there and, and witnessed this and the rest of the slate, I mean, like the pitchers were getting there, everybody was doing fine and no offense was really going off, you know, and I'm sitting there with all this Dodgers and then the first inning, they just started it, started killing him. You know, mm -hmm. they started killing Kelly. Boom, this, 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 two runs, whatever it is. And I was in, I was all ready to type into Discord or Twitter, like, how's everybody's Merrill Kelly's real life picture tape working out? Mm -hmm. You know, just totally just starting to count my money. And then I'm like, you know what? Maybe I should just, I should just sit back for a minute. Mm -hmm. But I think the baseball guys even knew that I was thinking of bragging. You know <laughs> what I mean? And 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 then they shut the Dodgers down in, in my in my lineups for the rest of the day. Yeah. Um, so 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 you know that, that's that's the way baseball works, I suppose. I got a little lucky with a lucky whatever. I got a, I had I, I I stacked the Mets against your your against your advice um, against Mikolas, and Mikolas was freaking just. Talking about guy having tricks. Talking about guys having tricks. Yeah, Dude, he was freaking unconscious yesterday. Yep. They couldn't touch. Him. Didn't didn't touch him. It took like a bailout in the ninth inning to like to, to for me to even remotely be competitive. Yeah, they were, they were right? down two zero in the ninth, and then then they next day yeah. I look up it's five to two. Yeah, thank God. And then so kept kept me in it for a while, but then I uh, couldn't quite get, even. Yeah, listen, I, Mookie did fine, you know. Um, but yeah, that's the way it goes. I'm I'm uh, hashtag on to the next one. Yep, absolutely. And uh, a reminder with those, with those with those stacks, the other advantage you're trying to look for when you're looking in the stacks is what I always keep trying to remind everybody, you want a speed power combination. So like even if Mookie doesn't hit a home run or doesn't drive in any runs, yep. you know, you get that stolen base that immediately takes you from a nine to a 14. And occasionally you're going to get two of them from those guys and then they don't need to hit home runs when they're stealing two bases. So just just wanted to remind everybody that with that said, Sheets, why don't we pull it up and go game by game because we do have a big one tonight. Um, some nice big tournaments. Uh, hopefully, uh, yeah, I'm I'm, 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 I'm gonna go in for one. Oh yeah, I know you will. You let's get let's go in. How about one. we go one two again? I'm gonna go in for one. How about how about one two three? Because you got one, you're gonna have two, right? Yeah, that's right. I'll have three. Yeah, the odds of those two. It would, yeah, I guess it's possible. We're gonna make, we're gonna make the po we're gonna make the podium. That's yeah. it. <laughs> Beyond the podium. Yep. Um, so we'll starting we're starting off with the uh, the let's see. I'm sorry, I'm skipping the other. We're, we've got some weather issues in some of these early games, which I'll. Just... I got. I got to get the uh, the Mrs. Sheets um, weather report here. It is. It, it is supposed to be kind of rainy here, but I don't know if it's going to be that bad. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. I'm a little worried about it. Obviously, yeah. there's a a key pitcher and a great hitting spot. I mean, look, you have Jordan Lyles and you have Severino against the Orioles. It feels like a spot where you you can go ahead and try. If it's risky, maybe you try to play everything in that game, or maybe you try to play. You know what I mean? Um, cause it is humid out there. I know it's not very warm, but it's, you know, you got the 80% humidity. Yeah. So anyway, 
All right, but let's start. Let's start off with uh, the first one of the night is going to be Miami uh, Washington, right? Uh, yeah, that's what I have. So we have weather concerns here as well. Um, I'll tell you what, I I I really think this is the year Alcantara is coming into his own. Um, the wind is blowing in. If the weather's a, a go, he's certainly on my list. And to be honest with you, I, I love, I, I'm on the side of Josiah Gray has got really good stuff. And he's, by the way, he's looked at the last couple of starts where even in short out, you know, five innings, he's put up 22 and 27 fantasy points. He's got some stuff. The, the, I think both these pitchers are very viable. I also think if you wanted to get contrarian with some Marlins, that wouldn't be a bad idea. And if you wanted to play Juan Soto, that's always a good idea. Nelson Cruz is 3,800. Those are my notes for this game. Um, yeah, I'm not as interested in, uh, in, in the pitching over here. Um, uh, let me see what the, what my radar shows here. Um, yeah, I get some rain, 6, 7 PM. Then again, like 11, I, I don't know. I think, I think Yankees would be fine. Anyway, um, Miami, Washington, again, I, I'm not really getting to the pitching here. I have Alcantara kind of as a secondary, op, maybe even a tertiary option. Same with Josiah Gray. And from the hitting side, I really don't have much over there either. So this game's kind of a pass for me. I kind of, I was about to say, I kind of hope it rains out. But then again, if, if I don't really like anything from the game, I kind of hope it doesn't rain out, right? I guess the way I'm supposed to say. Um, so I'm not, I'm not, as, I, I'm not really interested in either, any of this. Yeah. Uh, whenever I'm not in, the only thing, so I just want to refresh everybody. Alcantara is, is again, awesome, awesome, awesome elite level against righties. Uh, has had some trouble against lefties, but this guy's, I mean, he's, he's going to be an all-star in one of the next few years. And, and my, my, my prediction is that this is the year he, he really comes through. So I, I still have a little more interest maybe than you do. And you got a nice low run total too, in this one, seven and a half total. So definitely both pitchers make sense to me, but again, it's going to, I would have to have a very clear weather to any delay. Those guys are not coming back in the game. They're, they're staying out. You know what I mean? These are, they're not going to play around with these young stud pitchers ever. Um, Baltimore and the Yankees. If this game is a go, it's Severino and the Yankees. It's that's it. Let's let's. I'm I'm in. I'm into all of it. I, I don't love that it's 59 degrees, but I, I, I look. The Yankees have been brutal to a lot of people. Um, I certainly understand if you don't feel good stacking them. I, I think as a secondary stack, they make sense if you're not going to fully stack them. But I, I I'm high on Severino, and I'm always high on picking on Jordan Lyles, the Orioles bullpen, and I want to play games in Yankee Stadium. And the Yankees, even though they haven't shown it outside of Judge have tremendous power throughout their lineup throughout the one through six anyway of their lineup. Um, so I, I, I do think the Yankees would be on my board if this game was a go. If this game is a go uh, ownership, non-considered, I have the Yankees kind of tied with two other teams for the second best um, stack, obviously behind the Dodgers. Um, so, so uh, uh, I definitely think the Yankees are in play. If in fact, this game goes, uh, I, I, don't, and I think that pitching wise, I'll be able to get them in. Um, so yeah, I'll just watch the weather. And if they you think the game's going to go and you're willing to assume that risk, then yeah. Uh, and with respect to Severino, I am probably not going to do that um, just because I think I'm going to do something different. Mm -hmm. um, but I definitely, if I'm going to double pay up for pitching and, and you, you, you have, you're confident this game goes, I mean, you certainly the play, you know, I think uh, alongside of Rodon is, is the double pay up. So, um, yeah, I, I, I like, I definitely like him. Um, but like you said, I mean, if there's any weather concerns, I mean, it's even orange. I mean, I'm probably just going to pass, you know, you, I don't want to run that risk. Um, so I, I, I guess I tend to agree with you. Yeah. So it's, it's, and it's just, uh, it's probably, uh, you know, just, just worth noting that Severino is sort of tied with a slew of guys for the, second highest K prop on the slate at six and a half. I just like to throw these numbers out because I think they actually, these K props are, are legitimate. I mean, this is Vegas betting against the yeah. world. So, so uh, I do think we should look at those things quite a bit. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I, again, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of options tonight, but I do think the Yankees would be one of the stacks that I would definitely go after. I'm everybody knows by now that I've, I have a certain love for picking on Jordan Lyles, although he's actually been pretty good outside of his first start this season. Um, but I, I don't care. I'll bet, I'll bet the long-term results for with a team like the Yankees and a guy who has trouble sometimes finding the strike zone. And when he does, they hit it really far. Um, all right. What are your thoughts on the Red Sox and Blue Jays? 
So yesterday they had the game between uh, Barrios and whoever, like kind of like the redux of the game before. And Barrios basically duplicated the performance almost to the exact fantasy point. Boy, if they, they don't had, bring it back out for the eighth, he was in great shape. He could right. have also. But, but the fact is, I mean, so it was 21 points for two games ago, 21 points last night, right? No, he ended up at 16 because they gave up the two runs of the, his runners on base. Oh, I didn't even notice that. And it so dropped him from the floor for the win, too. So it was like a kind well, of. You know, I'm still giving him 21. All right. Anyway. Um, so now it's the same thing. I mean, you have Gaussman running it back against Boston after putting up a freaking fantastic game against them uh, here. So uh, in his last start. So, so what do you do? Um, uh, from a projection perspective, he's not showing up as like the best play, but it's kind of, um, it's kind of, uh, kind of silly not to respect the, the result from last, the last outing. Right. Um, so I, I, you know, I'd probably lower ownership than a lot of these guys, I guess I, I, I would, I would go back and take a shot at him. Um, and, Pavetta, no thanks. I, I would go back to Toronto uh, as a stack. Um, Pavetta, you know, he has obviously some talent, ta- maybe wasted talent, maybe just the guy never got there. I'm not sure how to characterize it. But the fact is Toronto swings it really hard. <laughs> yep. And uh, and and Pavetta can give up power and he can get wild and so all kinds of stuff. So mm-hmm. I definitely think Toronto is in play. So I think Gausman, I, I, I know I'm just going to end up with him. You know, he's not going to be like my, my, my pairing that I would give you right now. Um, and it's, you know, in my hand build, but I just have this weird feeling. That's where I'm going to end up though. Yeah. I kind of agree with everything. It does make me nervous a little bit to always take, you know, pitchers against the Red Sox. And then I, I don't want to be, I don't want to be overly reactive to it, especially when they're on the road. Like not to say that these guys can't hit it. I mean, Toronto is a pretty good hitters park too, but the Boston is a whole different level. Um, so, but Pavetta is another one of those guys tied with that six and a half, K uh, K prop. Uh, if you're believing, and I and I've always believed in Gaussman, so it's kind of funny for me to start taking the pivot on him as he's sort of you know getting there. I mean, he he dominated this team last week. I, I tend to think those things are hard to duplicate exactly when you get maybe duplicating a 20 fantasy point game is one thing, but duplicating a 30 plus fantasy right. Point well, point I don't need to duplicate. <laughs> yeah, no, right. You don't you don't need him to duplicate, but I do think Gaussman is one of the guys for me. Um, we're probably going to talk about six pitchers that I like today. Um, that I really like, and I'll, I'll, I'll highlight them at the end. I really like uh, Toronto, at least ex- some exposure to the stack. Um, one of my big mistakes lately is I, I, I tried to go for more correlation. So I, you know, who, who was the, the guy who got, got knocked out of all those was Bo Bichette at the Grand Slam. So Bo Bichette was in all my secondary lineups that, that, that cashed and all my other ones that didn't because I didn't, I wanted to go for more correlation with my shortstop. N- didn't end up working out so well because uh, Bo Bichette with the, with the big Grand Slam. But I don't think Toronto's going to be especially owned. You're going to have a guy like Zach Collins, a catcher, who should be really popular because he's 3.3K. He's shown that he's got some power upside, which we've heard about only in, through the grapevine in the past, and now he's actually showing it. Gurriel is, is too cheap. Um, th- this whole uh, team is too cheap outside of Springer and, and Guerrero, and it's hard to say those guys aren't ever a good play. So I, I really like the idea of getting, like a, at least as a secondary stack, Toronto. But maybe as a full stack, um, I really could see a, a big, a big, a big outing from him against uh, Pavetta here. So you generally want lefties against Pavetta. They don't have a whole lot of lefties in Toronto. It doesn't bother me. I don't, I don't think that he can. I don't think he's going to mow these guys down. So I'm very into the Toronto as one of my one of my semi stacks here. So and Zach Collins and Bo Bichette will both be uh, strong plays. And look, BVP doesn't mean everything, but Bo Bichette is eight for seventeen with a couple home runs and a couple doubles off of uh off of Pavetta which just gives you an extra nice extra nice feeling at least he sees the ball well against him um all right KC and Chicago what do you got for me Chiefs? well first of all you also get Matt Chapman is really cheap love um, oh yeah no Chapman absolutely I love Matt Chapman's really cheap and he just hit freaking the crap out of a hundred mile an hour you know Valdi pitch yesterday. you know what I mean like he could yeah. he he's you know I don't righty lefty whatever I mean he gets a hold of one 3800 yeah fine by me yep um, All right, this game is a uh, this this next one though is a, I mean this feels like a maybe you stack them both up kind of a game. Uh, I'm sort of shocked to see Kansas City's run total where it is. I feel like this game I would have thought would have a higher run total. It's the I think it's just the cold weather, but the wind is blowing out at 12 miles an hour, projected to be blowing out 12 miles an hour tonight. <clears throat> Keuchel and Lynch, um, 
I don't mind picking on either of these pitchers anymore. There was a time in the past where I didn't pick on Dallas Keuchel. That does not let that does not exist anymore. And I think both these pitchers, both these teams can hit lefties well. So uh, I would be on board for this whole game stack. The only issue I'm having is the 47 degree temperature. Yeah, you got to watch the lineup here too. So, so Robert, I have him day to day. Um, yeah, I, I wasn't getting too much of the KC, um, but the, um, the, the but the White Sox. Uh, actually, that's not true. I I, I do like KC, so I, I guess I agree with you. So the White Sox and KC, I think, are both really in play. Um, and yeah, look, look, you you run the risk of. And when you play against Keiko, you get one of those Keiko games where you just, you know, just can't get the ball off the ground, you know? Um, yeah. I'll take my chances. You know what I mean? Um, uh, so I like KC. I like Chicago. I don't like either of the pitchers. I currently have them, you know, very, very good value type, value type ideas, both sides. Um, so yeah, I think I agree with you. Yeah. I, 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 um, I think that you could, I think that uh, just going into some, some plays you have such a cheap, I'm so, I'm, I bet you when you run some things like they're, they're just so cheap. I mean, outside of Mer- Merrifield and uh, Perez, like everybody's like below three K until you get down to Mondesi. I mean, it's just, it's nuts. I mean, you've got Oliveira supposed to be betting second. He's two K you've got Santana 2.5 Hunter Dozier with some power who could hit it out at whatever temperature it is at uh 2.8. So all of those guys are a little interesting but I'm more interested in the White Sox side. I really like AJ Pollock as a one-off. Um, and I really like Andrew Vaughn, especially along with the obvious Abreu, Tim Anderson, Luis uh, Robert. So I, I do like, I do think this, the, the White Sox are definitely on my list. Uh, and I think this is a game where if it was 20 degrees warmer, that their run total would be at least a full run, maybe even more. They might be that they'd probably be the highest total on the slate and would be my guess. Remember what they did. They went, I think they went like 17 games in a row where they beat right left-handed pitching to start the season last year, something crazy like that. They took them like almost four months or something to lose to a lefty. Um, so the White Sox hit the lefties pretty well. All right. Atlanta, Chicago, uh, medium temperatures, another one with nice wind blowing out. Uh, Max Freed uh, is awesome. He's showing the upside here. This he again. He just he he beat the hell out of the Dodgers, and uh, after two sort of slow starts where they brought him along, he he dominated us and gave up two hits and two singles in seven innings. Uh, Max Fried is another one of those guys for me today. I don't love picking on uh, Marcus Stroman. Doesn't mean anybody can't lift one off of him. If there was a guy who who, who matches up perfectly, it'd be Matt Olson because you have an extreme fly ball hitter with an extreme ground ball pitcher. That tends to even things out and, and give you an edge of, of, of maybe getting a hold of one. But it's, it's mostly Freed and Olsen would be my only plays in this game. Although the, uh, the weather makes me kind of want to stack it. I just I can't find a way to. The sausage king of Chicago. <laughs> um, I, I like Atlanta. Um, uh, it's, not, you know, it's not the easiest thing in the world, like you said, to stack against Stroman. This is like the two, two – t- not, not, not to compare these two pitchers, but, but these are two pitchers that are just both kind of tough to stack against for different reasons, I guess. Yeah. Um, Stroman, by the way, Stroman might, might be a totally different pitcher now. I should, I should throw that out. He's looked, he, he's been the exact opposite so far this season and just his career wise and the way he pitches, but he's, I mean, he's been giving up home runs and he's been giving up, I mean, just a ton of hard contact so far this season. Sorry, Sheets. Go ahead. Well, one of them was in Colorado. I mean, that's, that's one was in Colorado against Tampa Bay is somewhat forgivable, I guess, but I like, know. I don't know. I did, they did an interview like, on the radio here in New York like last year, but this, this is a guy who was a, like a little league uh, manager. He managed both uh, Marcus Stroman and Stephen Matz when they were here living in Long Island. It was kind of fun. Oh, really? That's yeah. wild. Anyway, um, so I do like Atlanta here. Um, the wind's blowing out. It's going to help me, I guess. So I like that. And uh, I'm probably not going to do free, but I, I would, I would, I think I prefer free to, to, to Severino if there are some weather issues. You know what I mean? Like if it's oh, like yeah. even close to me to weather issues, I would take Freed over over um over Severino. Um I have Severino as my, you know, he's up there as my set, you know, second best pitcher. You were saying you like six pitchers. I'm you know I I'm I'm gonna go some I'm gonna go someplace else. But uh I you know at that range I like uh I do like Max Freed and I do like him. Yeah, I, I have Severino as a only if the weather is totally clear because there's too many other good options around him. 
Um, but I agree with you that that that, that current under current weather circumstances or any kind of concern, obviously Freed is ahead of them because of the the weather concerns. But I also think this Chicago Cubs lineup sucks, and Freed Freed is not a lefty. Like it's not like he struggles with either side of the plate. He can pitch well to righties. He can pitch well to lefties. He doesn't really struggle <laughs> like basically ever. So I like the idea of some Freed, but uh, uh, we'll, we'll get to the to the priorities at the end. And I'm just going to reiterate that I think Matt Olson is a phenomenal one-off, like just a phenomenal one. You could even argue for Ozzy Albies if he was a little cheaper because Stroman has the lab stolen bases. And I think that's something that, you know, if Albies gets on, he'll probably take off. All right. Uh, I'm going to wait. I'm going to save my stacking for the Braves until late, unless they're weirdly priced like they were last week. I'm going to just wait to stack them until they have Acuna or something, because I, I just don't think this lineup is as good as, as Vegas gives them credit for um as they're currently constructed losing okay. freddie freeman and ronald acuna are two of the best 10 hitters in baseball and we shouldn't just treat them like they're the same lineup because the 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 name across the front of your chest is the same all right here we have another really cold game of 44 degrees with only a seven run total and you've got erod and paddock so maybe it's gonna be more than six pitchers because I think you could make an argument for either of these guys. The preference would be uh, Erod for me. I don't trust how long Paddock will go. And he just kind of always blahs out. Like he doesn't really have that big upside. At least Erod, yeah, he has a downside for sure. But he's got, he's at least can, he at least can show some upside. Had some tough matchups so far. This is a good matchup for both of these guys. And if you want to, you know, take a contrarian approach, you can use the, the, the value of Kyle Garlic as, as a batting cleanup at, at two, at, or batting fifth at, two, at 2K. Urshela at 2.5. They have some cheapos. Um, Robbie, I mean, Byron Buxton, we always love against lefties, but the problem is <coughs> in 44 degree weather, without any wind blowing out, without any humidity, cross field stuff, it feels like I take the pitcher's spot, but I don't really want to take much of the hitting. How about you? Yeah, this is what I'm doing. So, I mean, like uh, I could say, but I'm doing seven hours before whatever. This lock now with whatever, that this is what I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to probably play Erod as my SP2. That's what I'm not, if you say. Yeah, so I'm going to probably gonna probably end up with Rodon, Erod, at least my initial construction. That just gets me all that Toronto if I feel like it. It gets me all the Yankees if I feel like it. It gets me all the Dodgers if I feel like it. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm content with that. Um, and Chris Paddock sucks. You know, I'm, I'm, you know what I mean? I'm, I, I've tried it too many times. I'm just done. Um, so, so I like Erod and uh, not getting too much of the hitting over here. And it's Paddock's just good enough for me not to stack against him, you know? Um, yeah, and it's not like you have the most exciting guys to choose to stack with. You've got right. Meadows and, and Baez, and everybody else is sort of blah. <laughs> like, yeah, you could argue for Grossman, I guess. Um, all right, uh, Mets and Cardinals, another one with a low total. You get a Cardinals bullpen game versus Bassett, who in general is a very good pitcher and is probably going to be totally unused by me. Um, I will probably just completely avoid this game in its entirety. How about you? Well, I will say that Bassett, uh, whatchamacallit, he's one game removed from failing at huge chalk. Um, was that, wait, was that him? Uh, yeah. No, he, it wasn't. No, 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 it was him. He gave up five runs. In the, he gave up five runs in the first and then shut things down for the next five innings. That's right. So um, he's just, I, I, I was just kind of hoping to get a little bit of a, a little bit of a discount <laughs> instead of a price increase off of the, uh, off of the, off of the bad performance. So I, 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 I don't think I'm playing the 9,800 and um, I'm, I'm just kind of off this whole game. That's sort of the same. That's what I said. That's how we're same, same page there. Um, all right. Houston at Texas. <sighs> Oda Rizzi and Taylor Hearn. Again, a, a little bit as I want to point out with the Houston lineup that it, it, it is a little different this year. Like it, when, I, when Altuve is, well, I mean, he'll be back at some point, but like with Altuve out, then when you have guys like McCormick at top, yeah, it's great. You get a discounted guy, but their best, their best power hitters right now are, is, is, is Alvarez. The guys who get you the most points are, are uh, you know, other than that are, is Tucker. Then you've got Bregman who makes sense as a play. I certainly can get behind the Houston stack tonight. Um, I don't think I want to stack Texas, but I like some, some of the individuals. I think they're fine to stack, actually. Um, 
I don't know. I sort of like both of these offenses, uh, and I'm certainly not interested in either of the pitching side. How about you? It's weird. We we again we 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 didn't talk about any of this beforehand. I don't you know, like always stress that. And there's a lot of spots where we always come out like really just different. But I think I think we might be be slotted on the same page this uh, this slate because I'm kind of exactly with you. I, I think that Houston and Texas, I both have I both have sort of mild interest in both, you know, and and, and not priorities for both. I would I would sprinkle them in, in, in MME. Um, if I was playing 20 lineups, I'd probably get to one or two of them. If they if they show up in being really low owned, I would try it. I think that they're right in that secondary stack area. So I'm, I just I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah, and um, you know, in terms of individuals, I keep coming up with a bunch of uh, uh, unfortunately a bunch of the same positions, but I do think that like. You know, playing. Uh, I'm just going to take a look at what his ownership is pro- projected early in the day. Uh, I just, I don't know. Yeah, he's going to be popular, but or no, he won't be popular. Uh, I think Seeger is a stands out to me as a great one off in this game. If you're not going to play the stack, and on the other side, I think Bregman is an awesome one off. So that's what I've got so far here. Cleveland and LA sheets. Take it away. I don't know. Nothing. I, mean- I like Sandoval. Oh, you do? All right, we'll talk about that. You have the best. So uh, Bill Miller is going to be behind the plate tonight. Oh, there you go. That's it, Phil. And, uh, and, and Sandoval is, uh, has good stuff. They haven't really let him go a bunch. I don't think he's going to end up as being like a, the, the priority pitcher for me, but he's certainly high on my list. I think he's got the strikeout upside to put up a big game. Uh, we know Cleveland has a very boom bust offense. They do nothing, nothing, nothing. Then they score 11 runs. Then they score 11 runs and they do nothing. Um, so I, I, it's, it's really going to depend on his control and that's because you have a control pitcher, a guy who struggles with control and you have the best pitchers umpire in baseball behind the plate. That gives me enough of a reason to play him. I have tremendous, as I was saying last year, when everybody wanted to stack against him, I think that McKenzie has really, really good stuff. Um, I don't know when he'll put it together to be a great starting pitcher, but I certainly, I, I, again, it's a big slate. If, if anybody wants to play any of the angels, I have no problem with it. I didn't get to them as a stack but it, it, it would certainly wouldn't be a bad off the board stack because the, you know, there is some upside and I'm just going to double check the weather tonight. I think it's a little cooler tonight than it was yesterday. Not that it mattered yesterday. didn't score any runs. Yeah. 67 tonight, but the wind should be blowing out to left. Um, so, uh, so, you know, Trout, Otani, Rendon, those guys would probably be my favorites and Taylor Ward, maybe he hits two home runs again, but I, I don't think I'm stacking them. Just wanted to throw it out there that I think it's, because McKenzie has the wide range of outcomes with his style. Like he's going to strike it. He can strike out eight guys and he can walk eight guys. Like, I mean, they won't let you walk eight guys anymore, but you get what I'm saying. Yep. So, so that's it for that one. All right. Why don't you talk about what you're doing in the Dodger game? And then I'll, I'll go to my stuff. Yeah. So I have the Dodgers rated as the, the top overall stack on the board. Ho-hum. Um, uh, and I th- feel as though I can make it work with the, with the Erod savings. Um, and, you know, depending how ownership kind of comes in, uh, I want to, I want to try to get as much of that as I can without, without getting too highly owned. I, I currently show just, just insane ownership on the Dodgers though. So uh, like man, I have to pull some Bobby stuff and play two, four, six, eight, or one, three, five, seven, nine, or, you know, or, or play the low owned guys or whatever it is. Um but certainly the Dodgers rates the top stack for me and um, probably going to try to play them. Yeah. On, on FanDuel, they're all like, you know, they're all in a similar price range. So just playing anybody at the bottom of the order is going to be beneficial if you want to get off the chalk on DraftKings, you, you probably are looking at maybe like Chris Taylor, Gavin Lux will be the lowest owned. I don't think that Will Smith and Bellinger will probably be the next two, but they're all going to have something there uh what worries me about the zach davies thing is just it's more of a historical thing i'd have to check the recent recent numbers a little bit better not necessarily this year but i want to see the past um but he 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 did he he did give up actually he's given up three home runs in the last two starts but not a guy who generally used to give up a ton of power and not a guy who used to walk a ton of guys but he's off to sort of a shaky start on all those fronts which just seems like it would spell disaster against the dodgers so I'm 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 very into the Dodgers stack. It's very hard not to make it the the priority, but I don't I don't actually I shouldn't say it's very hard. There's plenty of other stacks I like, 
but they are a really, I think a really good one. And I think you get different by, by including some of those guys at the bottom of the order. And don't be surprised if you see an occasional switch in the starting lineup. And if you don't, you know, again, the Chris Taylor, remember Chris Taylor was an all-star last year. So when you're playing a 3.4 K guy batting eighth, don't think of it as just, he's some bum or whatever. This guy is actually, a, you know, he's a good enough hitter. Like Gavin Lux is a guy who could hit 300. He will hit 300 in someday soon. I think um, one of these next couple of years. So, and then I, 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 I'm not going to do this, but I do think that all the projections for Gonsolin are a little bit off. He hasn't faced the, the easy matchup. I made the same point about Bueller last night. He had this the, at Colorado versus Atlanta versus Cincinnati. That's, that's, that's like a very treacherous when you, when you compare to you, when you bring in this Arizona lineup, which just doesn't scare me in the slightest bit. Um, so I'm not going to play Gonsolin, but if I was playing 150, he would make it into like 5% of my lineups. And, uh, in terms of priorities for Dodgers, it's the usual suspects. It's Turner, Muncy, uh, Betts, Freeman uh, as, the, as my favorite four. Uh, the, the, the favorite, the fifth would probably be Bellinger, actually. Actually, I think Bellinger might be ahead of those guys because of the price. But I really, I really do like them. And I think you can stack them and, and, and beat people with your secondary stack. And I think you could use them as a secondary stack as a way to possibly get there. Just pick your three favorites. Um, and go from there, but they will be in uh, most of my lineups tonight, at least some version of that. All right, San Francisco, Oakland. Um, this is the number one pitcher on the slate. I don't have anybody all that close. Uh, Carlos Rodon is arguably right now at the moment, the best pitcher in baseball, like which is just with how good he's been so far, certainly been the best fantasy producer. He's averaging 30 points per start, hasn't been touched basically at all. Um, strikes out what he's striking out, like almost was that almost was 1.8 per, per at 1.8 per inning. That's like an absurd number. I mean, is that real? One, no, 1.7 per inning. Uh, it's crazy. So I, I think by law, by law, far and away, Rodon is the best pitcher and pitching option on the slate. And, um, I don't think that's any surprise to anyone. He does. He actually is the second highest, uh, strikeout total at seven and a half, the highest on the slate being, Wait, no, I'm sorry. He has the highest at seven and a half. So I, I love Rodon. Uh, I don't really know any argument against him except for that he's going to be popular. Sheets? Yeah, moving on to the NBA, I guess. Uh, yeah, but, but I don't know what else to, what else to add. I mean, he's uh, going to rate to be the best play by, by a shit ton. He's going to be owned a shit ton. And, you know, he'll make sure that you uh, get different elsewhere and just play him. That would be my uh, recommendation. All right. It sounds good to me. That's what I'm doing. So here's, here's some of the things that I, that I came through uh, in terms of favorite plays. Um, all right. So pitching wise, I have Rodon as on his own tier. The other guys I'm considering are Severino, Sandoval, Gaussman, Freed, and Erod. Um, that's what I've got for right now. I think that uh, I do like the idea with the Erod as the secondary starter. There is not another pitcher that I'm looking at that I really want to spend down on. Um, I, I guess Sandoval would be the closest thing at 8.1, but, um, <clears throat> and you know what, if not for his terrible start, I think I would have taken some shots on Stroman here. Uh, just 5,900 is kind of getting to the point where I'm actually going to include him in my pool just because I think that there is an, an avenue for him. I don't, again, I don't want to give Atlanta this team too much respect, especially a righty dominant team. Um, and then the, my favorite one-offs are Bichette, Collins, Pollock, Olsen, Tim Anderson, Seeger, Bregman, Turner, and Bellinger. For me, currently, it's uh, it's Rodon and Erod. Um, but if I choose to spend up, it would be probably Rodon, Freed, um, uh, or Se I mean, obviously, or Severino, but probably Freed if there's those weather concerns. And uh, hitting nothing fancy, at least at this point, either, you know, uh, Dodgers, White Sox, Yankees, Toronto. Um, and uh, that'll, that's it for me until six, I guess. Yep. And uh, stacks for me where I didn't say my, I forgot mine before. Um, if the weather allows, the Yankees are one of them. The Dodgers are my favorite, Toronto, the White Sox, and uh, both sides of the Houston, Texas game with a lean towards Houston. All right. We'll see you at six or, or so. Sounds good. Oh, actually, we won't. I won't see you at six. You'll see I will see you at six. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Good luck, everybody. We'll see you later.